Hi, I'm Barry Ostrowski. At Barnabas Health, we believe citizens need to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support health care programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners on public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868, Barnabas Health, Wells Fargo, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship, and by PSE&G committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. This is One on One. That's good acting, man. I'm a poop for you, man! I get that a I go to Atlantic City all the time, like, are you the guy? I go, no, I'm not. This is one you can't afford to miss. They thought that I wouldn't survive it, but I knew I would. We are pleased to be joined here on One on One by uh, Dan Gerskis, who is the Dean of the College of the Arts at Montclair State University. Good to see you, Dean. Good to see you. We should let everyone know we're coming to folks from the Dumont Television Studio right here at Montclair State University. Good things are happening here, and this studio by itself is a big piece of the media and communication equation, which falls under the communication program, excuse me, the uh, School of the Arts here, correct? That's correct. The uh, College of the Arts has uh, two schools, two departments. Uh, our newest school is a school of communication and media, and uh, as part of our ramp up to that, we've installed two high definition studios here, actually um, upgrades of existing analog studios, and uh, we're quite pleased with the, uh, the result. Actually, right in the studio, um, our colleagues Mike Snyder, every night uh, NJ Today comes out of here, and Susan Cole, the president, had been talking for a long time about wanting to, I mean, this is my alma mater, and those of us who come out of here with a journalism media background, we heard a lot of good things, a lot of things were going to be happening, but that requires a lot of capital investment. It requires a huge commitment, Dan, to do that. What is it that you, that Dr. Cole and others saw and see that caused you to say, this is what we, as a university, in these tight economic times, must be into? Well, it's clear that media uh, is a, a focus for, um, for students now. It's a very popular program, depending on, um, on the area. Um, and more to the point, New Jersey is really underserved when we think about uh, the situation uh, with the New York market, with the Philadelphia market. Uh, and so to actually create a place where news can be uh, gathered, can be disseminated on the professional side, uh, as well as on the academic side, uh, it makes sense. But there's more to it than that. You had an interesting quote in an article. Uh, which that's what happens when you get quoted. <laughs> People ask you what exactly, exactly does it mean. Um, you have said that I'm interested in the ways in which the arts and the media articulate in higher education, not only uh, with the other, but also with the entire curriculum and ultimately the world at large. Elaborate. Well, I think... It's a, there's sort of a mistake that the universities exist in ivory tower environments. Uh, they clearly don't. But what I'm interested in as a dean, what I'm interested in for the college, is to make connections with the world, not to just insulate ourselves with um, our own academic interests, but really think about what, what the world needs from us right now, what, what it expects from young people entering the labor force. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that's the articulation that I've been talking about. Can in, give me in, an example of that, Dan. Like, well, break that down, because sure. it sounds very exciting, but for some folks, they say, okay, explain exactly what that could mean on the ground level. Sure. Um, well, let's, let's talk about journalism. Uh, since we're sure. uh, in a good spot for that. Uh, you know, the, obviously, this is a bad time for, for print. Uh, newspapers are going out of business. The ones that are still in business have fewer and fewer reporters. But interestingly, it's actually a pretty good time for journalism generally, because now we're shifting the, the paradigm to more online delivery. And for every new online service that comes up, there are dozens and sometimes hundreds of opportunities. So to prepare students to enter into that world as opposed to the world of, of newsrooms where they were just putting out a daily every day uh, is the sort of thing that I'm talking about. And, and as you know, it's, uh, it's changing at a breakneck speed. Mm. Uh, so we want to have a curriculum here that is agile, 
that's responsive, that takes into consideration what's happening in the world right now. It's interesting because uh, I've taught as an adjunct here, and you come in and you, you meet. And you get very high marks too. Yeah, yes, um, and and a lot of pay. <laughs> that was yeah, a joke. It's not. And by the way, in the great faculty here at Montclair State, the adjunct and the full-time faculty, very committed, and many of them are practitioners. They are not not by accident. Not by accident. Not by accident. And then the, the important part about that is what I've been struck by as the students. We have students here at Montclair State that seem to understand. They'll say, well, I want to go into television. And, and your wife, tell everyone, who, because she uh, is in television. She is in television, television. Yes. Uh, Jennifer McLogan. She covers Long Island for Channel 2. People, it seems to me that many of the students here at Montclair State are getting the idea that you don't come in and say, I want to go into television. I want to go into print. There is no such thing anymore where you can come in and say, that's what I want to do. And Montclair State seems to be positioned very well to train, I, I don't want to use the word train, get young people prepared, prepared to be engaged in a whole range of communication and information platforms. Is that too simplistic a way to say it? I, don't, I think that's a very accurate way to say it. You know, the, the, the challenge for us in higher education is that we're trying to prepare students for a world that doesn't exist. We're trying to prepare them to be able to work 10, 15, 20, 25 years out from now. Um, who knows how many uh, different jobs they'll have during that period. So if we're focused only on that first job, on that first year, um, then we're really preparing them for a life of frustration. So to provide them with the intellectual tools that will allow them to learn on their own, to unlearn the old ways and learn right. the new ways is something that, that is a challenge for us, but one that we embrace and uh, it's important. And one of the keys to that, uh, Dan is bringing in good people, Meryl Brown is coming in with an extensive background in media communication, headed up uh, msnbc.com. Correct. Um, he was also there for the, the birth of Court TV. Big deal. Yes. Huge deal. Also, the other thing that was interesting is you guys have an initiative um, with our colleague John Mooney at Spotlight, NJ Spotlight, but also is the media, is it called Media Commons? Uh, News Commons. News Commons. Right. Um, uh, which is part of the larger center for cooperative media. Yeah, with, with Deb Gallant. Correct. That is looking at online media, community-based media, which no one has really done in a systematic, organized way. Why is that so important? Well, for the reason that I said before, which is that um, people in New Jersey get their news primarily from New York or from right. Philadelphia. They, some know more about what happens in City Hall right. with Mayor Bloomberg than what happens in the State House here. So and we what, suffer for that. <laughs> absolutely. So uh, we at the university are very sensitive to that, and we feel that as a public institution, we need to serve the public, and one way is to help to create this ecosystem which will allow us to disseminate and also to gather news and send it out to the various uh, local sites, hyper-local sites. Before I get you out of here, uh, Dan's also agreed to do another conversation with us and I want to talk about more about the art side of things because uh, you may not know in 1989 he won an Emmy for James Stewart's Wonderful Life. We're going to talk about your screenwriting and all that piece of the equation but real quick before I let you out of here because your program the school of uh, uh, the College of the Arts also deals with the John Jay Cali School of Music. It does. Real quick on that it's important. Well the Cali School was the first school in the college and it is really um, a center for uh, some great musical activity. Uh, we, are, we have some extraordinary programs. Our, our, uh, one of our choirs toured Europe, was in Vienna. Um, our larger university singers are going to be performing with the New Jersey Symphony this year uh, at four locations. Get your tickets now. <laughs> you, always you have to plug, <laughs> right? right. Um, and, and we still have not lost sight of our core mission in that area, which is to create music educators. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a very successful music education program, a very successful uh, music therapy program. So we're, it's not just the arts, but it's looking for sure. an application for those arts and engaging with the community. In the second conversation with uh, Dan uh, on 101, we'll talk about uh, the Department of Theater and Dance and also the Department of Art and Design, and also your background in film and theater and uh, the screenwriting and a whole range of work that you've done coming here to Montclair State. Dan, I want to thank you for joining us on One on One. Well, thanks for the last time. Thanks for inviting me. You got it. This is One on One. I'm Steve Adubato coming to you from the Dumont Television Studio right here at Montclair State University where great things are happening. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, 
email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at oneonone.org. Or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, Ph.D. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato here at the Montclair Film Festival. I should say we're actually at the Bellevue Movie Theater for a very special screening of a movie called Bad Parents because the parents are really bad in it. Meet Kathy. She's moving from New York to the suburbs. I am a soccer mom. Stop yelling at my kids! She has no idea what she's in for. I would like to make a motion that we split the U8 girls by ability. You hear the going A and B this year? You know, go A and B team. You're on the B team. Don't worry, our kids are going to be in the A team. You guys are like tiny, shiny diamonds. Unfortunately, some of you are going to need to be cut. Did he actually say cut? They're going to cut some of these cute little girls. They're cutting some. Some parents will do anything. Are you asking to be my assistant coach? I think Lindsay could benefit from an extra day of training. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Playoff tickets. To help their kids win. Welcome to the team. You have no idea how lucky you are. No, my daughter is. Isn't that what I said? When the going gets tough. It's time to start cracking skulls, don't you think? Yeah! These parents. Well, we would do anything for our kids, right? Get crazy. Hi. Parents, they're the enemy. They are vampires. We're gonna go get ice cream after the trials, okay? 20 bucks in it for you if you score. No computer for an entire month. No dessert if you don't. Your kid cost us this day! Janine Garofalo. Bad parents. I want you to know how much potential I think your daughter has. Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, right, right, right. Now, we've interviewed the filmmaker, uh, Janine Garofalo, one of the parents, and some really nutty parents, bad parents. But the guy who helped bring it together is the creator, the chair of the Montclair Film Festival, my partner, my friend, um, Bob Feinberg. Bob, how big is tonight? Because look at this, this crowd great. behind us. This is great. You know, well, listen, tonight is an example of the Montclair Film Festival uh, uh, programming year-round, which is very important to us. We got a huge crowd. We're competing. I think there's some political event going on tonight. I'm not really sure what it is. Tonight's the night of the only presidential debate, and uh, it hasn't stopped tons of people, hundreds of people coming in. That's big. Yeah, we've got a sold-out house. Um, uh, people are uh, are excited about this movie, and they're excited about the Montclair Film Festival bringing people like Janine Garofalo, Keith Agentis, filmmakers to Montclair. You don't have to go to the city anymore to have this happen. Hey, Bob, how do you wind up picking? Because Janine was excited, Keith was excited about the fact that you, you picked them, you brought them in. But now, after out of the box, big success, how do you wind up deciding, hey, we're bringing them here? So we've got we've got some some professionals. So Tom Powers and Raphael and Nyhaus and our festival directors program the festival itself, which will happen in May. And they're also out there year round looking for movies, looking for personalities that will resonate with people in Montclair, in New Jersey, in this region. People are, I'm happy to say, now coming to us. Tonight's film, Bad Parents, uh, Keitha Gentis is a filmmaker. Keitha came to the opening night screening at the first Montclair Film Festival, where we screened The Oranges. At, at Montclair State University. She was there that night? She was there that night. She was sitting next to one of the reporters covering the evening. She got turned on to what we were doing, and when she was prepared to release her film, she wanted to do it world premiere here in Montclair. Talk about word of mouth. So she's sitting there saying, I could do this in a lot of places, a lot of film festivals. I want to do it in Montclair. Yeah, I want to do it in Montclair. And I'm happy to say that Keith is taking the film. She's going to be all over the country doing the film festival circuit. And everywhere she goes, she's going to be able to say, and I know she will say, this film world premiere at the Montclair Film Festival in Montclair, New Jersey. So great, great opportunity for us. We've wanted all along to support New Jersey filmmakers, right. uh, local filmmakers. Um, we we had a special segment of the film festival itself devoted to New Jersey filmmakers and New Jersey films, and we're happy to do that year round. And this is a this this is a great great opportunity to promote New Jersey and filmmakers from New Jersey, actors from New Jersey. It's great. It's great for everybody. By the way, Bob, let everybody know the website they can go on right now as they're watching us on public television, the website they can go on to find out everything that's going on with the Film Fest. MontclairFilmFest.org. Uh, we're, on, we're on the web, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. Uh, put us into Google, MontclairFilmFest.org, and uh, join us, see what we're doing, become a member of the Film Festival, uh, get early notice about the events. 
we, we have a good problem. Virtually every event we hold uh, sells out. Tonight's sold out, notwithstanding the presidential debate. Um, uh, so uh, uh, follow what we're doing so you have early word. We're going to have another fantastic fundraiser in December, December 7th. Stephen Colbert, one of our biggest supporters, is going to do another live event with a special guest. And we haven't yet announced the special guest, but it's going to be a great event at the Wellmont Theater in, in downtown Montclair. Lots of great stuff going on. Folks, we're talking to Bob, as you know, as we said, in uh, October with the presidential campaign coming up. Last time we talked to him right outside the Montclair Art Museum. And we had a great day that day, and so much was going on that week of the film festival in May, right? Uh, it was the first week in May, and it'll, right. be, the, it'll be the first week in May again uh, in 13. It's going to be a day longer than it was last year. They're gonna be, really? They're gonna be too more, many films. Too many films. They're going to be Nice more. problem. It's a great problem. And bigger venues, that's another problem. So the, the theaters here in Montclair, great theaters, not big enough. So we've got bigger venues for next year. We're going to be... We're going to be at MKA at Montclair Kimberly Academy in their auditorium. We're talking to Bloomfield College. We'll be back at Montclair State University. We'll be here at the Clearview Theaters. Um, and we're going, to, we're going to try to grow uh, more films a day longer, more films during the day, more filmmakers, more, uh, more stars. Um, just keep, keep growing. We had a great, great first year, uh, thanks to all of our supporters, including you. Lots uh, of partners. Lots of partners. Um, so we've had... Um, Really, the kind of support Montclair State University, Montclair Art Museum, the Adult School of Montclair uh, Foundation supported us, um, uh, the Lurie Foundation, the Montclair Foundation. We've got corporate sponsorship from Audi, Newberger Berman, Royal Bank of Canada. NJ.com was involved too, NJ.com, right? a big supporter uh, on the media side, NJTV, NJ.com, um, WNET. Uh, so you we, don't, No one can do this alone. No, you know, we've got a board that's now up to 26 people, 26 hardworking people, people who are not only opening up their checkbooks, but opening up their date books and making time for us. Most and of their them, Rolodex. And their Rolodex. We've got great connections. So 26 people on the board, an advisory board that's even bigger, uh, filmmakers supporting us on our artistic committee. We're going to have an event in November, a networking event for people in the business to get together here in Montclair and share, uh, share stories. Um, just the support in the community, in the media, local media, hyper-local media, national media has really been, uh, has been tremendous and we, we think it's going to continue. The buzz is there. Yeah, you know, the buzz is really there. There were some people early on who sort of doubted that we'd pull this off. Uh, but the first year really presented, you know, great proof. We, one example, in the last year in, in May, on the Saturday night of the festival, we had six films. Every one of them was sold out. Um, so that's a good problem to have. First year. First year. Sold out, six films, one night. Yep, it really, uh, it, was, uh, it was a great experience. And uh, we're thrilled that the community and the surrounding communities have supported us as they have. I remember saying to Bob as we finish up, uh, what do you do for an encore? He's starting to answer that with the board, the great board and the staff and the volunteers. And we're here at uh, the opening, a uh, very special screening of Bad Parents with very bad parents, but a great cast, a great director and uh, filmmaker. And uh, Bob, again, congratulations. I know there's more work to do. And there's just more and more people from the town and from other towns who want to come in. So Absolutely. it's great to be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at oneonone.org. Or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, Ph.D. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato here. More importantly, I'm here with Evie Colbert, who has been such a key player, not just a board member, but, I mean, just... You've been involved in so many key things and making great. things happening. But we are just talking to Bob Feinberg before, and he was talking about some of the great things that are happening. Uh, first, let's talk about tonight, why bad parents, and they are bad because I talked to them before. What makes tonight a special screening? It's a world premiere. We're the first people to have this movie, which is pretty great, right? Right. Nobody's seen this. Right. And also, great cast, great, great independent filmmaker. Cast. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Did you, had you, did you envision that beyond the first big week, which was bigger than anyone thought, that it would be events like this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you did! 
<laughs> and, I told you this last year. I, I know you dream did. big. She, she big actually dreamer. does. <laughs> some of some of the folks were like, let's do 14 films. <laughs> Have you always seen big things? Half full. Totally half full. Not glass half empty, glass half full. Okay. And with the film festival, because the economics of it are so important, because yeah. you can yeah. have big ideas and they could look great on paper. Yeah, it costs money. Yeah. yeah. Describe the challenge of the economics, the business of the film festival. Well, I think the challenge is raising the money to put it on. It's sort of, it's sort of like you have to create this little event, but you have to get the money t before you can create the event. So what we have, the luck that we have now is people have seen what we've done. So it's a little easier to talk about and to describe, and people know what we're talking about. Plus, we have events like tonight, so it's right. not just that week in May. It's a year of events, so we can say to people, if you come in as a member and a donor, you'll be a part of this, and you'll be able to come to events like this and in May. So it, it's a challenge, but it's not as hard as it used to be. I mean, it's still a challenge. We Always. still need a lot Always. of help, a lot of help and support. But it's an easier story to tell, and it's a great story. I mean, we, we're so excited. The growth and support has been incredible. You know, when we first talked to Evie about this, uh, you talked about your experiences early on with the film festival, with you and Stephen. For folks who did not see that first public television interview, give folks a sense as to what that was and why this film festival is so important. Well, ours was a little different. We both grew up in Charleston, South Carolina, and there's a festival. Just like Jersey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh, cut that out. Okay. Edit that. More hospitable, maybe. <laughs> no, Montclair's different. Montclair's different. Yes, go ahead. So anyway, there's a festival there called the Spoleto Festival, which is not film. It's more music, art, theater, dance. It was founded by Giancarlo Minotti, who's an opera composer. So it was slightly different. But when it came to Charleston, Stephen and I were both young. Really, er. I don't. Er, yeah, er. no, always it's like yes. ten. Yes. I don't know, babies. Yes. So we grew up with it, and he did some. He was in the operas, and I worked backstage. I think that's still the story of our life. Actually, still playing out that way. It's more complex now. <laughs> it's a little bit like Good. that. But anyway, we both, our lives were changed by the exposure to professional artists and musicians, and and sort of seeing what life can be like when you make your living in the arts. And, and it really is what brought, brought both of us to New York. And it also was incredible what it did to our town of Charleston. It became, it was always a small town, but then it suddenly became a town that had great restaurants and, and you know, lots of musicians and artists and dancers chose to live there year round. So the community changed. And it was an amazing impact on a, on a small town. So, I mean, Montclair is a little different because we're so close to New York City. Mm. So it, it has a different kind of feel for us, but I think not just for um, children, but for people who live here, whether or not you're young or old, to sort of brush against that kind of life is a wonderful opportunity. And finally, let me ask you, Bob Feinberg was talking before about uh, an event that's coming up at the Wellmont that yeah. he was really excited about. Could yeah. you tell us about it? I think so. <laughs> no, he already did. He didn't. No, not the special. No, 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 not the special guest. Right. But there's something that's going to be happening. All right. Listen, we're not going to talk about that. I just don't know. If we're, on December seventh, we could tell Go, you that. Yes. It's going to be a big, special, amazing fundraiser. And money's going to be raised again. Money's going to be raised again. It's a fundraiser, and you really want to buy your tickets the moment it comes out because it will sell out immediately. How about that? That's all you need to know, <laughs> Evie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to see you. Onward and upward. Onward and upward. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and the Montclair Film Festival, 13 for WNET, and NJTV. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868. Barnabas Health, Wells Fargo, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship. And by PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And The Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.
One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Since 1865, we've sought to deliver the very best possible medical care to the people of New Jersey. Today, you'll find that mission made real in every facet of the state's largest healthcare system, with world renowned doctors using the most advanced technology and techniques, pioneering a new path to better care. We are Barnabas Health, a new name for the next great century of medicine. Barnabas Health, every day extraordinary. I'm Steve Adubato. Join me for the next edition of Caucus New Jersey Taxes, Healthcare, Education, and the Economy. I'll ask the questions that you want answered. Airing on NJTV 13 and WHYY. Check your local listings. Each year, Americans fill 4 billion prescriptions, but as much as one-third of that medication will never be used, generating 200 million pounds of pharmaceutical waste. Some of that waste ends up in the rivers, lakes, and streams that make up our nation's drinking water supply. With no technology available today to remove these prescriptions, proper disposal of unused drugs is our only remedy. The United Water Foundation and the National Community Pharmacists Association have partnered to provide you with a simple solution. Dispose your medications responsibly. Take your unused medications to the pharmacy, or you may be able to obtain a postage paid mail back envelope to send them directly from your home. Not only will you be protecting our water supply, you'll help prevent abuse and accidental overdose by both children and adults. Go to disposemymeds.org to find a participating pharmacy and to learn more. Some restrictions may apply, including the return of controlled substances. A public service message from the United Water Foundation and NCPA.